Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of This Is My Bourbon Podcast. I'm your host, Perry, and with me this week, as he always is, is Eric the Whiskey Mutant. Do you want to want to, do you want to taste it? <laughs> He's been singing this. He's been singing this for like an hour straight. Oh, dude. He just I, loves Peacemaker. I do, and I don't ever fast forward through the intro. That's all I'm going to say. I don't either, but... I love it. John Cena looks so uncomfortable doing it like everybody else is like loose and like having fun well, i think that's he just put on his new uniform and it's too tight so he's stretching it out uh, okay. Do you really, really want that <laughs> i love it <laughs> oh goodness gracious well if you love this show and you are returning we hope that you have been well and if you're here for the first time thank you so much for checking out the podcast and please go ahead and subscribe if you have not yet please leave us a five-star rating and review on your podcast app of choice we actually have a new review to read out yeah. today at the end of the episode so we appreciate that uh you can follow us on social media at my bourbon pod and at the whiskey mutant well just at whiskey mutant sorry i added a thought there. i am the whiskey mutant you, you are the whiskey mutant. follow me at whiskey mutant yeah that's that's what i that's what i meant i don't know uh, what you meant all right jeez pushy uh and you can also <laughs> support the, <laughs> you can also support the show at patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast for as little as a dollar a month for as little as five dollars a month you get bonus content and patreon is also where you find out first about big major awesome tim bip news exclusive which includes our announcement of the very first full like big i don't, I don't know big meetup weekend of this yeah, is my bourbon podcast we haven't figured out a name for it but it's it's going to be legit. Uh, Dave Levine suggested, what was the name? Tim Bip Bimbop. No. No. <laughs> I would, I don't even, I'd have to like figure out words that would go along with each of the letters in that name to make it even slightly workable. But uh, all of the information about that is currently on Patreon. Uh, it is going to occur the weekend of Memorial Day this year. Uh, kind of looks like Memorial Day might be our set weekend moving forward for yeah. our, our big meetups, but uh, that's just because we're trying to find a good time to slot ourselves around everybody else's schedules as well. So that's all I'm going to say about that here, because we talked about it for like 20 minutes. Yeah. And, and that, the, that announcement's already been out for a few days. They'll There may be something that, um, for the general public, um that we'll announce later on so just keep an eye out yeah don't want to talk too much about that before we get things set but i would love to hop right into the show with something that we have been doing for a long time uh it's called flying blind and this is usually where one of us blinds the other with a sample or a drink um that typically one of us has not had or have not had in a long time and I haven't explained this segment in a long time either, so I'm kind of like having to catch myself back up on things. But Eric is doing this week's Flying Blind. I am. I got a bottle that I'm pretty sure neither one of us has had. I haven't had it before. Unless Perry got a sample of it randomly before, um, like way back before I was over here. P- P.E. times pre-Eric. Uh, <laughs> P.E. times pre-Eric. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure he hasn't had it either. So, here we go. Ooh, it's got a good color. It does have a good color. I don't know what this is. But, we're going to find out together if we like it, though. I like the nose. Ooh, I do like that. That's like... That's almost like a um, cinnamon brown sugar Pop-Tart. Mm-hmm. It's very brown sugary. Yeah. Like right out of the toaster. It's not as bright as I thought it was going to be, like with the brown sugar. No. the As it kind of creeps towards the finish, it starts to perk up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, the finish is where it's at. Yeah. Oh. Um, but overall, it's a little flat. At least on the front end of the palate. I, I don't would, hate this at I don't, all. No. I'm trying to think of what that is. There's something specific i'm getting that i just can't figure it out like i know what it is but i can't say it you can't say it because it would give whatever this is away no no i can't i can't can't find the words okay (sighs) what is this i don't know i can't think of it 
It's almost like it's almost like an apple turnover, but there's not apple in it. Does that make sense? It's like all like the stuff that you it's got like it's you know it's an apple turnover, but maybe they it doesn't have the apple. Like, I don't know. Can I be honest with you? I think that this leans a little bit more like pear than it does apple though. I think so? Yeah. Maybe that's maybe I'm thinking apple but that the taste i'm getting is something different yeah i like it i do too it's different and it's it's just strange that it's so flat like on the first half of it and then once it hits the finish it just kind of blows up a little bit you any guesses want to guess any bit of it where do you think the proof is I think the proof is a little deceptive. I'm going to say uh, I'm going to say like 95. Close. 100. Is it about 10 years old? I don't know the age. No, it def- okay. it's definitely not 10 years old though. Okay. I have no idea what this is. Um it's at least 5 years. Why do you know it's at least 5? It says it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It says it on the bottle. <laughs> the way that you showed me what that was was so funny. <laughs> uh, so this is the uh, New Riff Red Turkey Wheat, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, bottled and bond, NCF. It's good. It's at least five years old. <laughs> it says it. <laughs> so if that's sitting beside... That six-year-old rye. What is it? The the malted rye. Yeah. Uh, what are you picking up? Malted rye. Me too. Yeah. This isn't bad though. No. Um. No. And I will say it's got more complexity to it than a lot of weeded bourbons mm-hmm. do. But I don't like the labels on it. It doesn't. It interrupts the like cleanness of that bottle. I don't like that big white on there. Like no. I like this. Like it's got like this kind of shiny. Crunk, like if that was that, and then everything else was like the clear or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not bored. I'm just really tired. <laughs> um, whether in bread or bourbon, red turkey confers rich grain forward flavors typical of old time wheat. I can't even say that word. How's it spelled? Very. Varietals? V- varietals. Varietals. I'm such an idiot. I no, can't you're not. Read. I can't read it all. Uh, while in this case, conjuring a zesty brightness to rise from the glass. So, 70% corn, 25% red turkey wheat, 5% malted barley. And malted barley is apparent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's it's giving it like a little bit of a cinnamon candy flavor to it as well. Which is real nice, but that's uh, that's good. Thanks for bringing that. Yeah, dude, I like that a lot. I had it for a little while. We picked it up. Um, I forgot that you had it. Yeah, I picked it up uh, when I went and saw me and April went to Ohio and saw Ian. Um, and I was like, we haven't tried that yet. So yeah. here we go. There we go, indeed. Before we, before I get to uh, what I've been drinking recently, I need to grab what it is that we are going to be doing for our review this episode. So I'm going to let you go ahead and start talking about what you've been drinking recently. What have I been drinking? While I grab these glasses. Um, what have I been drinking? Let's right. see. I, uh, I had some Penelope toasted. Um, I did a pairing on Whiskey Mutant uh, Instagram for that. Which I'm really impressed with uh, the stuff Penelope is putting out. Um, they were nice enough to send uh, me some samples to pair with. So um, I've got a sample of the 13-year-old light whiskey that I can't wait to pair. Um, what else have I had? Me and Perry did a a rye blind flight on... Um, on the YouTube uh, live stream. I won't say what we had because maybe you haven't watched it yet. But I've had a lot it of rye lately. It surprised me. <laughs> yeah. I've had a lot of rye lately. I poured a little bit of uh, Kentucky Owl Rye Batch 1 last night too. So, And I poured a little bit of the Knob Creek Cast Strength Rye 
the what's the proof on that? The barreled in 2010 edition. It's 127 proof. Oh yeah, I love this whiskey. Yeah, I I think I had some of that bottle and it was amazing. Yeah, I failed to mention a particular bourbon that I got to try recently on last week's episode that I said I was going to bring up and just totally slipped my mind. Uh, but last week's episode was almost two and a half hours long, so <laughs> forgive me. Uh, but by the way, uh, thank you all so much for listening to the last couple of episodes. I know that they have been a little bit different from what we normally do, uh, but the the response to them has been great. So I just appreciate you guys being flexible uh, with our stuff and giving us the chance to kind of do something that's not exactly the the same the same thing (laughs) yeah i just like i mean that's that's my type of podcast is when you get your normal stuff but then every once in a while you get something a little different you get to hear somebody's perspective on something else other than just bourbon and whiskey for sure so my dad papa ritter got entered into a raffle through the lexington bourbon society for the chance to purchase a bottle. And he got selected. And the bottle that he had the opportunity to purchase was Kentucky Owl Batch 11. Mm. The first batch without one Dixon Deadman. The man himself, yes. And I, I was hesitant going into it. I was pretty guarded about, you know, whether or not I was going to like it. But... I was I was open to it just to see whether or not it was going to be at least on par with most releases. What is the smile that you keep? You you have this little like creeping smile. No, I'm just interested in the no, story. Okay. It's just like you had some joke or something you're going to no. say. Okay. Um uh, I am pleased to report that it is still good bourbon. Unfortunately, it is just missing a little something. And I think what it is, is that, I hate for for it to just be one teeny tiny little thing. But you know how Kentucky Kentucky Owl Bourbon always has that toasted marshmallow note? Mm -hmm. It is completely missing from it. Can this... Obviously, it doesn't live up to the previous releases, but is it worth the same price that they're keeping it on? Nope. Okay. Nope. That's what I wanted to know. It, it's it's missing that little extra like touch, that little something that makes you feel like time and thoughtfulness and patience was put into the product itself. Okay. It really feels like a rushed version of Kentucky Owl, which is a shame yeah. because I didn't want it to be, I wanted it to succeed. I wanted it to be a really right. good whiskey and it's just, it, it's, it's good. It's just good and not much else to it. What would you, what would be your suggested retail price of this product? Ooh. Based on like 150. Okay. Which I think the Kentucky Owl probably should be about that anyway, yeah. one fifty to two hundred. Yeah. But I think this is like the the one that finally might get people just full on questioning, going, right. "Why?" Because honestly, I don't think that it's that much better than something like E. H. Taylor Barrel Proof. Yeah, which we love. We yeah. love the. Yeah. I mean, of course, we love the twenty twenty one release. But like, I didn't drink it and felt like it was that much more special than any other barrel proof yeah. bourbon on the market. So don't pay $300 for it. I'll have to trade a uh, pop Ritter a sample for a sample of that. He he'll be he'll be open to that. I'm sure. I was hoping that we could get a sample just so we could review it. Yeah. Or have it on the episode. Um I also got a sample yesterday of Boss Hog 5 Ooh. uh from our buddy Tony Limpero. So I had to go drop off his bottle of Picking in the Rain. Uh, and I haven't gotten into this yet, of course, but I'm excited to. Yeah. 13 year old rye whiskey. Man, I, I've only had like one or two other boss hogs 
and I know they're crazy expensive. Luckily, I didn't. It wasn't. It was like a pour of it, and yeah. they're really good. Yeah. There was a um, a restaurant that had it on their bar, and the lady was like, "I was like, how much are your bourbons and ryes over there?" And they were like, "She was like, oh, honey, they're all the same." I was like, "No, they're not." See right. that one up there? Can I get? <laughs> no, she's saying they're all the same price. Oh, I said how? Uh, yeah, I was asking the prices of huh? them, and she was like, "Oh, we just charge about the same." I was like. How much is like an ounce of that bottle with like that pig guy on top of it? And she was like, oh, that's like $11. What? I was like, can I have two ounces of that? <laughs> it was awesome, dude. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> can I just buy the bottle off of you? I thought about it. <laughs> no, that was good, though. I think it was like, what, what, what one's the new one? What year or number is it? Five. Five? Yeah. I think it was like three. Oh, okay. I can't remember the one that I've had. I had it with Chad and Sarah. Yeah, a long time. It ago. was like it was like whatever a couple a couple of releases before the newest one. Yeah, whatever that is. Maybe it's five. Maybe it's six. Maybe it's maybe it's seven. seven. Eight. Maybe it's twenty sixty nine. It's always your fallback <laughs> number. <laughs> it's okay though. It's funny. So I wanted to do this this week because a couple of reasons. I needed a little bit of a change. Okay. I just need I just needed something different to do. Change it. Time may change me. But I can't change time. Sorry. Let us know. Do you hate the singing or love the singing? Because <laughs> we do it a lot. <laughs> we do it a lot. <laughs> I don't think we can help ourselves at this point. Uh, but so I, I've had this around for a while and I kind of forgot about it, but I wanted. Ooh, it smells to... really good. We haven't even like made it yet. Ooh, it does. It smells really good. Um, I, I wanted to just, I just wanted to do something different. So this is an infused ice cube that once, once, that once it melts, along with your whiskey, will create an old fashioned. I like this. So it's blood orange and ginger, uh, and that's. I don't have a whole lot of information on what, what what's the, the, what's the brand. Uh, it is from Herb and Lou's, like H E R B, and L O U apostrophe S. Oh. Uh, brilliantly crafted cocktail mixer. Uh, this is from the back of the box. Urban Lou's infused cubes are a careful concoction of some of the best sourced ingredients in the world. That means grade A cocktails with nothing but a shake or a stir. Our cubes are pre-mixed and ready to mingle with a variety of liquors and seltzer, too. Single and ready to mingle, baby. We, would, we like to call them almost ready-made cocktails. Just add your favorite hooch. And for this one, they say simply add bourbon. Simply freeze a box of Herb and Lou's infused cubes. When you're ready for a drink, peel back the foil and pop out a cube. Done that. Drop the cube right into your spirit of choice or shake everything together to mix it up fast. Then follow Urban and Lou's lead. Sit back, sip, and enjoy. <laughs> follow my lead, boys. Uh, this has no alcohol in it. So the only alcohol that we're really getting is from the, uh, from the whiskey. Yeah. So, Just like a normal old fashioned. So what well, bitters have alcohol? Do they? Yeah. I didn't know it's that. Not, it's not much. It's like... Oh, I didn't know that. It's like 10 proof. Really? 12 proof, something like that. I have um, no idea. Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's one of those day. things that people used to do a long time ago to like cure I uh, illnesses. Like they would mix it with seltzer water oh. or something. Or, you know, I had you no know. idea. I thought they were just bitters. Yeah, they've got alcohol in them. Well, go home and drink you some straight bitters, a chug of like bitters. a like a beer. <laughs> oh God! You could uh, mix a. I'm just gonna start dashing bitters on everything now. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, it's uh, orange bitter steak. Yeah, <laughs> got some orange bitter chicken over here and some rice. Oh, actually, that would probably be really <laughs> right. It would. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little excited about that. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now that I think about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's Taco Bell all over again. I ain't getting started. All right, so what, what bourbon do we want to mix with this? Uh, I'm inclined to go higher proof because I like higher proof 
old fashions. I but if too. you want to go lower proof, no. I'm okay with that. I want to see what this thing can do. Benchmark foolproof? No, I want a little bit more flavor. Uh, flatboat foolproof? No. <laughs> Elijah Craig barrel proof? Too much flavor? That's a lot of flavor. How about Knob Creek single barrel? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. I think that'd be good. Sounds good to me. I'll tell you, one of my favorite things in the world is a a rare breed, old-fashioned. Well, I like that one that uh, you found out about at OBC that used... Um, oh, the... Uh, was it used Booker's? Uses Booker's. I'm not a big what Booker's it, fan, but I liked it, it in old-fashioned. Like a dinosaur or something? I, w- I almost said Megalodon, but it's not that. <laughs> it's something like that. The m- m- mer, the m- the m- merman, the mer- <laughs> mermaid man and barnacle boy. <laughs> the- I'm an old fashioned. <laughs> no, it was something like prehistoric or something like that. I know that's why I want to keep saying megalodon, but it's not that. Ice age. <laughs> the mer, uh. I don't Woolly know. Woolly mammoth. F- no, no. <laughs> Crap, I don't know. How much of this am I putting in here? Uh, I just threw a couple ounces in. Basically enough to like cover up the ice cube. Okay. We let it sit. We shake it up. It said do whatever you want to, basically, yeah. right? I mean, it's it's kind of like mixing up It was right already now. mixed a little bit. Yeah. Tyrannosaurus Rex. No. Oh. That might have a B in the name somewhere. The Merc. My butt, the my my butt. I can't remember. It was good though. It was like a smoked old fashioned with Booker's, right? Yeah. Let me text Chad. Which Chad are you texting? I uh, Perkins. Oh, good. I was like, don't text that other Chad. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to figure it out on our own without him. I almost said the Don Draper too. <laughs> the Don Draper. <laughs> We went from dinosaurs to Don Draper. <laughs> Which actually probably would just, uh, I guess it would just be an old-fashioned, wouldn't it? Yeah. So my, my ice cube is a, about a quarter left, maybe? Yeah, mine's just under that, I think. I will say... Do we let it dissolve all the way, or do we just... I think we can kind of sip through it and okay. let it, I mean, let it dissolve as you're drinking on it. Um, it's a little sweeter than what I normally like in an old fashioned. It's not bad, but it's not like a. It's not the greatest. What uh, What am I trying to say? I would. I think what you're trying to say this. is. I think what you're trying to say is you don't really like it that much. No, I would like shoot this and like a, this tastes like. It tastes like somebody who doesn't know how to make an old fashioned. They put too much make sugar. An old fashioned. Um, <laughs> do what? It's just the way you said it. <laughs> somebody who doesn't know how to make an old fashioned is making an old fashioned. Yeah, and you just it's you just drink it to get it over with. How can we make this better? I know how to make this better. Oh. Perry's bringing out the cocktail kit. Oh. Okay, first off, I was wrong on the proof on bitters. Um, just the regular Angostura is 44.7% ABV. What? Uh-huh. <laughs> Shit, I didn't even... Damn. The orange bitters are 28%. Hmm. So. I had no idea. God, that's just not good. When it When it dissolves... It looks like a uh, bourbon that you forgot to drink and you uh-huh. left it on your nightstand. And Dude, it's so even even just like murky aromatically. As soon as I added the Angostura in, it smelled more like an old fashioned. How much did you put? How many I drops? just did like three dashes. Uh, three dashes. Do you need a spoon? I feel uh, like we need to mix this up a little bit. I think I can swirl it pretty good. Okay. Oh, now it smells like an old fashioned. Well, it smells much better. 
It doesn't smell like a um, old fashioned made in a a wet basement. <laughs> it's still sweet, but it definitely tastes more like an old fashioned now. Did it say the oh, ingredients? like ten times better. Did they say the ingredients of that? Does it have what kind of bitters does it have? I don't in know it? if it can have bitters. Oh, because of the alcohol. Yeah. Because it wouldn't actually freeze. This is much better. It's not ideal, but it mm. is infinitely better. This is a cocktail I would make. I would use this cube and a little bit of bitters if I'm just like on vacation. And yeah. I just want to like make a big like Yeti cup full of like an alcoholic drink. I'm not Absolutely. Gonna, I would make a big cup of this and just take it out to the pool or the beach because I don't really care at that point if it's like a really, you know, detailed, dialed in cocktail. So, so we got these at World Market for $12. There's six ice cubes that come with these. I think for that scenario, you need at least two individual cubes. Right? For a big Yeti cup. Yeah. But even still, you've got to have like, I I mean, what, like 10 ounces of bourbon Hmm. to offset some of that? And even still, I feel like you need to add ice to it because this isn't cold anymore. No. Man, this is a hard, hard one. (laughs) (laughs) It's just like tough and like stiff. I mean, it's. It's just really rigid. Mm Mm-hmm. There's nothing pleasant about it. But there is there has to be a way to make this doable. <laughs> um while you're like on vacation or something like that. Like yeah, without adding 10 ounces of bourbon to it. Give me another one of them ice cubes. I got an idea. Okay. I have a Coke Zero over here. <laughs> I I kind of like where you might be going with this. I think we're going to see what it's like if you make a uh, bourbon and... Uh, Did you already finish yours? Yeah. A bourbon and Coke with this. You want to throw it? No. Oh, I was like, I thought you were just getting ready to like Frisbee thinking, it over to me. I was thinking me. about it. I'm going to let you struggle with it like I did what? for a what? second. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. The packi- packaging on this is top notch. Oh, this it's really cool. gorgeous. It's, it's got this like, real nice Art Deco look to it. Yeah, it reminds me of like... Um, Great Gatsby. Some, yeah. Here, give me one too, because I'm curious with the... Can I have half your Coke? Yeah. Okay. I don't even think we need that much. All right. There's that. All right. Okay. Let's see what we got here. This reminds me of a oversized like butter, butter cup. <laughs> like you would get they, it like Bob Evans. Yeah, like Cracker Barrel or something. <laughs> Dropping the cube in. Dropping the cube. I'm going to do Coca-Cola. Coke Zero. I'm going to fill it up about halfway to the cube. Okay. Do you want to stick with Knob Creek? I think we should, just for... Just for consistency. Yeah. And He's then, about to tell me it's the Mastodon because I knew as soon as I saw his name pop up, I was going to remember the name of the cocktail. Mastodon. It's, I said the, Ma- it's the Mastodon. All right. So then I added about another, uh, just to cover the cube. So about one to one, Coke Zero to bourbon. I'll let that mingle for a second. Menage a trois. That's French for three managers. Yeah. You know, you got the Coke Zero, you got the bourbon, and you got the cube. Yeah. <laughs> That's what this drink is called, the Menage a trois. What is this episode? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm having fun, though, man. Let me yeah, tell you. <laughs> dude. This is, this is always fun recording. All right. Well, so far it smells like bourbon and Coke. It does. Let that ice cube melt a little bit more. I got to be honest with you. I just don't like the original that much. Even with the added bitters, it's just weird. I mean, it's just... 
I want to like it. I really do. I'm just not a big fan of, you know, other than Eli Mason stuff. Yeah. I've not, I've yet to find one pre made mix that you just add the alcohol to that makes a good, like, old fashioned. I, th- I think that the one from Heaven Hill, the Elijah Craig branded one, is really good. I don't think I've had that one. Oh, man. I'll have to try it. I did it with the Elijah Craig Toasted. Uh, and like as opposed to just the regular small batch, and it was excellent. Okay, I think you could do you could do two of these and do half Coke, half bourbon, and you could make a poolside beach drink with this. That's pretty good. It's not amazing. You know what it is? I think it's the ginger that's throwing me off. Yeah, comparing the two, I mean, I like the menage a trois better than the regular old fashioned. I mean, take that how you will, but hey, hey, I'm I'm just being honest here. Hey, I. <laughs> All right, I I I think I do like it better with the coke, but it's. <sighs> I don't know. I think that the the problem with all of this, unfortunately, is the thing that made us want to do this experiment in the first place. I just don't think that the cube itself is that good. No, it does not say add Coke. Or and, add bitters. And bitters and bourbon, you know. It just says add your hooch. I think that should have been the red flag right there. Well, they didn't, they didn't say hooch. I thought they did. No, they said spirit of choice. Oh, I thought you said hooch. Maybe I did. I swear I think you read hooch. I did read hooch. <laughs> See? <laughs> Red flag. <laughs> okay, I, I added a few dashes of bitters to the menage a trois. Just to see if there's any kind of, like, change. Better, worse, the matter? Well, I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm just curious. So it's not a menage a trois anymore. It's menage quattro? <laughs> quad. Quad? A menage quad? It's menage in the quad. It smells really spicy. Yeah. It's pretty good, too. Oh, I like it better with the bitters. Ooh. The menage quad. It brings out <laughs> is legit. It's actually really good. <laughs> I think we found out the the method. This is my. This is going to be my vacation. I think I'm going to do the same. Because you could, you, you could, got zero calorie Coke. Yeah, I got Coke Zero. You got. I'm pretty sure this doesn't have. I thought I saw somewhere where it said that it didn't have many. Uh, well, then you just got your many calories, your empty all. calories from uh, whatever bourbon. You yeah, use. low low calorie, yeah, naturally flavored. If you don't want to use something high proof that's got a little bit more water added to it, that's lower calorie than barrel proof. Yeah, I mean you could throw like one hundred one in this. I could do. I could. I would do like. I do. According according to what size cup I have, two to three cubes. And then a one-to-one mixture of Coke Zero and bourbon, and then a few dashes. Yeah. Dude, that's good. Again, that's though, good. Th- the only thing that throws me off is the fact that it's six of these cubes for $12. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're trying to keep this, if you're on vacation for an entire week, and you're tr- you're trying to, p- jeez Louise, it's a lot of money just for you gotta have, like, infused ice what? cubes. A ha- use half of one one day, half the next day. If you're there for a week, you're going to end up buying like at least one a day, three or four. Yeah, yeah, packs. Uh, yeah, I think we figured out the the best way to do this though with the the coke and some bitters. How much? Let's see, Eli. I'm going. I'm just going based off the best one. Um, twenty dollars for ten ounces of Eli Mason old fashioned mix. And that will last you how many? How long? Uh, Longer for, than like these when I cubes. when I make an old fashioned with a pre made mix, I usually go like one part mix, two parts or three parts bourbon. 
So it just depends on... Each bottle is good for tw- 12 to 15 servings. So, I don't know. We're not making an old-fashioned, though. We're making a m- menage a quad for vacation. Thank us later. <laughs> Tag us. Tag us on your vacation trip with or d- menage a quad. It, please don't bring us up in your divorce proceedings. <laughs> <laughs> Menage Quad Cocktail. <laughs> Hashtag that. It's got to have the word cocktail in yes. it or else Don't we're going to leave the tail gonna off. Be, we're going to be Don't leave liable. the tail off either. <laughs> We've lost our minds. Oh, this is good though. Yeah, we cracked the code. It's not bad once you get to like... No. Uh, but the thing is, like, I wanted this to come right out of the package and be... You know, just ready to drink. Is uh, are these pre-frozen, and like you have to get them, and then are they at the store frozen? They or do you freeze them on? Your I own? don't remember. I think that they're frozen at the store. So that's another thing. If you're going on vacation, Oof, you're gonna have to put them right. in a cooler. If they're if they're not, if you freeze them yourself, it's a long then it's good. ride too. If you're if you're driving, you'd have to get a little cooler and put it in there. Surely these are not pre-frozen. God, I cannot believe I'm so invested in these cubes right now. <laughs> Each of these has less than one fluid ounce, like once melted. Hmm. So the better investment really is Eli Mason. Yeah. Because you're not buying the bitters. Ice is ice. Yeah. It's not free, but, you know, it's ice. And, I mean, basically at that point, you're only adding whatever you need, which is basically how you like to flavor True. your old-fashioned. But if you use this stuff, you can make a menage a quad, and you can use yes. a hashtag... And you can post it on social media. And I think people will like it. Minaj, M E N A G E, A A, quad Q U A D. Yeah. So if nothing else, we at least came up with a new cocktail today. Yeah. I'm all about it. I- I'm here for it. This is <laughs> research and development, the podcast. Play it on that, me. That's our weekend cocktail. <laughs> The podcast weekend cocktail is the for Menage a Quad. For the for the Tim Vip Heck meetup. Yeah. The Menage a Quad. And we just give everybody a whole like a whole like solo cup full of it. <laughs> it's warm. <laughs> You're like, y'all were idiots. <laughs> um, I, I hate that I don't like it. On its own. Yeah. Go on. But like truly, I don't think that it's as easy as just adding right. whiskey to yeah. it. Being serious, whatever. It's just not that simple to put an ice cube in and add some bourbon and you got an old fashioned. Even when we just used the cube, we had to add some bitters to it. Yeah. And even then we were still like, mm. eh, something's missing. Yeah. So. Anyway, there anyway. you go. That's our review for the Urban Lou's, Mon- oh, wait, no, it's actually <laughs> called their Old Fashioned Infused Ice Urban Cubes. Urban Lou's Old Fashioned Infused Ice Cubes. They call it the Cooper. I love the packaging, though. I think the packaging's gorgeous, but the rest of it's whatever. Anyway, I, yeah, I, I don't like that. Anyway, is it time for tips and bits? I think so. I think it is as well. Eric, what do you have to recommend to people this week? Uh, Keep watching Peacemaker. Um, I did a whole intro with Peacemaker. I just love Peacemaker. I think it's great. There's just, it's just a mix of everything. There's drama, there's comedy, there's action. It it just does stuff that makes you sit and go, they really did that. And I think that's (laughs) awesome. Um, and boy, did they. Yeah. They went for it. Yes. Uh, Book of Boba Fett, episode five is great. I'm not going to go into the details. I've 
blasted that all over the place. We talked about it on Patreon. Yep. Um, I do have a... Uh, oh, I want to recommend you guys go to YouTube. Um, and you go to um, uh, Bourbon Bites. And you watch... I was going to recommend this Our too. friend Clifton do his... Uh, the was Death it? Nut Challenge. The Death Nut Challenge. If you... <laughs> Watch the whole thing because Clifton's awesome. But he starts out with just this life and this energy about yes. him, and he's just like, "I don't know how it's gonna go," and I'm, you know, just curious if things are gonna end up really he, sad he gets, for me. And, I, me and Perry did a live stream, and I was already, I'd had a few pours, and I put Clifton's stream on, and he got to a point where the like the hotness of that challenge kicked in. And he was trying to stay cool and read comments. And it at, I lost my mind <laughs> when I saw Clifton struggling to read comments. Well, and, the, thing, the and, thing was... And you could see him sweating. And you could see the, the expression on, him fa- on his face that was like, oh, shit, here we are. But he, like, set that challenge for himself at the beginning of the video. Yeah, yeah. Like, he said, I am going to read out every super chat I get, no matter how yes, much yes, I cannot yes. speak. Which was a mistake when it kicked in. Like but you can it was see the such... moment it kicks in. Oh, it was I incredible! It. I was on the couch. I about woke the house up laughing. The so last, hard. the last nut that he had, the death nut. Yeah, you could see this single <laughs> strand of sweat <laughs> running down his forehead, oh. and I just knew that that night was <sighs> not going to end well for him. I swear. And, I love it so much. But here's the thing. I don't know what it says about me that I've found so much enjoyment watching my friend <laughs> endure such pain. It's like jackass, dude. I think it is. It is. I think it is. Here's here's the thing, though. And I am going to say this once and for all. <laughs> we are not doing that. Are we? No. <laughs> Swan kept trying to get me to do it. I mean, I think... I can't... Look, I know you can't do it. I would do it for content. I, I would eat dude, in the hospital. Dude, we cannot put ourselves through that. I mean, I literally have Crohn's disease. I may die. <laughs> A very good reason not to do I it. I know, I know. And I, know. I already, like, my bowels are not exactly stellar. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove ourselves from the competition ahead of time. I'll do a snack cake challenge, though. I'll eat as many snack cakes as I can until I puke. I want to go back and redo the uh, the cheeseburger challenge from. Oh, I'll do that. Too. Matt Madness. I'll do that. Or just it wasn't even Matt Madness. It was just we were. He being was on there. He was part of it, right? Yeah. But wasn't that on ADHD Whiskey's channel? Was it? I think so. Uh, the only other thing I have to recommend uh, while Perry was looking that up. Is uh, I started a new podcast about Star Wars. It's called Thank the Maker. And um, if you, the reason I started this was uh, uh, Will from the podcast uh, sent it to me because he knows the music I like. And it is a Star Wars podcast that the three uh, uh, hosts on it are the lead singer from Yellow Card. The bass player from Story of the Year and the bass player from uh, Bayside, which are all bands I like, and they just review Star Wars stuff. And they are currently on uh, the Book of Boba Fett, and I'm enjoying it a lot. When that, when when somebody cusses on the show, they bleep it out with the droid the droid talking sound. I'll do that this episode. <laughs> I'll do that this episode. It's so for good. You. Yes, that would be awesome. Um, but yeah, thank the Maker Podcast if you like Star Star Wars. Okay, so the uh, the Whiskey Tube Burger Challenge was indeed on ADHD Whiskey's channel. Uh, I want him to do a snack challenge, and I want to be on it. It was at the beginning of the pandemic. I mean, it was March 21st, 2020. You getting some of that one, what is it, 111 proof yes. Chattanooga whiskey? And I'm going to do a uh, I can't drink menage any, quad with it. I can't drink any more of this cocktail right now. How, uh, Where's the bitters at? Well, there's that. Oh, wait. I, had, I, had, some of the... I had like a quarter of the left. Um, but yeah, that's my tips and bits. So I will, uh, I'll do another YouTube tips and bits. Ooh, that's good, too. 
I started watching the YouTube channel Defunct Land last night. Oh, I've seen that. I've not watched it, but I've seen the uh, the previews for it. They uh, they have a really good video on the Nickelodeon Hotel in Orlando, Florida, <laughs> which starts out just awesome and really cool. And like they've like you know they've got like seven hundred something rooms that people can book, and it's just you know Nickelodeon characters all over the place, and they've got a giant bucket in their water park that once a day dumps green tinted water, and it looks like slime, and it's so cool. And they've got characters, but the characters are like SpongeBob and Cosmo and Wanda and Jimmy Neutron and people from the Oogly Booglies or whatever. What? Like, I mean, it's just weird characters. And then, like, he goes on this this rant of like all the character actors that they have, and it's like like he's struggling with names and everything. And then he goes, and Little Bill. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit <laughs> but this video this video has my favorite comment of all time on any video ever and i i i i started the video and i watched through it for about 10 minutes and i i was just scrolling through the comments just trying to see what somebody what anybody said and the second comment was and i had to pause the video because i was laughing so hard at it when I was at the Nickelodeon Hotel, we saw a dead squirrel in the pool. Somebody said that it was the real-life Sandy from SpongeBob, and a bunch of kids started crying. <laughs> and that, that is one of the funniest things I have heard in my entire life, and I could not stop laughing after reading it, it was so good. And kids started crying. <laughs> it's real life, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> so good. It's so good, man. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm uh. finishing up the office this week as well. My most recent uh, watch through, but. I don't know. I don't have anything like groundbreaking I mean, this week. It's just that <laughs> <laughs> dead squirrel in a pool, but she gets crying because I think it's <laughs> Sandy from SpongeBob. Oh, this podcast is just what it's gone off the rails. I love off it. The though. rails. It's always off. the We're rails. We're on the rails, baby. We make our own rails. Yeah, handrails like they should have made in the <laughs> Star Wars. Don't universe. get him started. Don't even stop it. <laughs> I think that about we does make it for our this. own rails. Where we're going, we don't, we don't need, need rails. rails. <laughs> Old drunk guy just running like across a platform and just falls off. <laughs> He's got a jetpack though, right? Doc, you got a anyway, jetpack? I I don't. No. Oh. But I do have a good ending for this podcast, and that's saying thank you to everybody who listens to the show weekly, and thank you so much for supporting the show in all of the many ways that you can do so. Eric has all those ways, and I'm going to turn it over to him right now after the end of this sentence, which ends right now. And that's my cue. Uh, If you want to become a patron of the show, just go to patreon.com, my bourbon podcast for a little as a dollar a month you can support us and at five dollars you get all the extra stuff which we got a lot of extra stuff there's a big announcement on patreon so please if you want to get on that check that out if you want to send a email with questions comments or if you want to get perry's address to send him samples or anything else interesting you can put in a box just go to this is my bourbon shop at gmail.com and send us a message there if you want to get some merch and apparel my nope it's not my it's just bourbonshop.threadless.com uh if you want some whiskey mutant stuff it's whiskeymutant.myshopify.com then if you want to leave us a voicemail and ask us something tell us something whatever we'll play it on the show and we'll reply to it you won't hear it in real time because we'll wait for the recording 859-428-8253 uh, social media, you can join the Facebook group. This is my Bourbon Podcast Facebook group. Uh, we'll answer a few questions. We'll put you on there, and you can uh, ask questions for the Patreon pregame chats. 
Uh, follow the show at My Bourbon Pod on Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube. This is My Bourbon Podcast. Perry goes live every Thursday at 8 o'clock. Um, and then I am on with him about once a month. And uh, I think that's it. You can follow me at Whiskey Mutant on Instagram and YouTube. I'm working on a YouTube video. So we'll see. Really? We'll see how that goes. Sweet. Yeah, I gotta. I need your help with some stuff. I don't okay. really understand what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Just this is my bourbon podcast. Just search it, follow us, and come hang out Memorial Day weekend if you want. You missed you missed one thing, but I gotta get to it. Um, if you want to leave us a review, just leave us a review on all your podcast stuff. And we do have a new review this week. It is from Jay Hughes, also known as John Hughes, also known as the host of the Embellish podcast. Oh. Five stars. He says, great podcast, even if you don't like whiskey. Oh. See, I like that. I do, too. Love listening to this podcast. Yeah, it's got some of the requisite whiskey-related banter, but it also has tips and bits, the pregame chats, and even interviews with whiskey-adjacent folks that sometimes had almost nothing to do with whiskey. Not just another whiskey podcast that talks about ideas and viewpoints that appeal to a pretty limited audience. I always geek out a little bit when it gets to comic versus movie talk, too. Hey, that's what we love. That just... That's a good review. Yeah. Because that that's what I've always liked about the show, even before I was on, was... You get the bourbon stuff. You get the banter. And then there's always a little bit of pop culture thrown in there. Yeah. And now here I am ranting about Boba Fett on a podcast. And I'm talking about handrails. Yeah. In the Star Wars universe. And zippers. <laughs> Freaking zippers. But that does it for this week, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I think next week we might have a little topic that we're going to touch on. Mm. And that's going to be the death of heritage brands oh. in the bourbon market. The sounds like industry. A, sounds like a uh, a Batman a comic. It. Yeah, the death of Heritage Brand. <laughs> Year two, guys. Thank you all so much for listening. As always, tell your friends about the show if you have not done so yet. I probably should start saying that up top. Yeah, too. tell it's people the, about it's us. It's the best way for people to find out about the show. You tell your friends. Share it. Share it around. Post on social medias. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's it. I. We love you all so much for listening and just in general because you're wonderful human beings. And that does it for this week. We'll see you real soon. Until then, I'm Perry. I'm Eric. And this is My Bourbon Podcast. I like the menage a trois better than just the old fashioned. Yeah, I think I do too. (laughs) (laughs) What? Wait a second. Hold on. Should we back up or should we just power forward? (laughs)